what is up everybody i am and welcome to the jcam fund overview i am your host william Benatti, and i am joined by principal and founder jack Krupe. Uh, the purpose of today's webinar is to share with you the second quarter updates and performance of the fund uh, we do welcome any questions or feedback you may have so let's go ahead and, and jump into the agenda of course we have our disclaimer and disclosure there um, so we'll be doing brief introductions then we'll briefly touch on the diversified fund We'll talk about the current assets and the second quarter updates for each, how to invest, and then lastly, finish up with our contact information and any questions or feedback you may have. So for those of you who don't know me, I am William Benatti. I grew up in Colorado and got a degree in finance and real estate from Colorado State University. Right out of college, I got the Series 766 in Life and Health and spent seven years in the banking and investments and then transitioned into a more entrepreneurial path through investing in real estate. And this started out with wholesaling houses then flipping houses, then investing in non-performing loans. And while I was living in New York City in 2014, I connected with Jack and ultimately joined his team to run uh, the NPL Dispositions Trade Desk. I was there for two years and then both Jack and I left and have partnered up again to form the JCAM Diversified Real Estate Fund. My family and I currently live in Vail Valley, which many of you may know or visit from time to time. So if you're ever out here, let me know. Um, and that's it on me. Uh, Jack, why don't you bring us up to speed on, on your story and background? Uh, sure, sure. So I also uh, got started in more uh, traditional real estate, uh, fix and flip, had my broker's license, uh, owned rentals, did wholesale. Um, and then in 2008, I was uh, fortunate to transition into the distressed uh, loan side of the business at the, you know, kind of the leading edge of the financial crisis. I uh, was part of a fund that was buying non-performing loans in 2008 and then uh, uh, left after about two years and then uh, joined up in the family office and started buying loans at larger scale. And then we partnered with a private equity fund and uh, bought over $3 billion of non-performing and re-performing loans. Um, I actually left that firm in 2019 and recently was bought out. Um, I did do a, a dual MBA, um, spent uh, most of 2019 traveling uh, back and forth between uh, Hong Kong, New York, uh, and a few other uh, partner campuses. So got a uh, uh, really good background in macroeconomics uh, in different parts of the world. Um, and uh, over those last uh, five years or so, I, I'd been active as a limited partner in syndication. So I, I saw the potential of the syndication market with multifamily. And, uh, um, you know, as we transitioned, uh, just where we are in the economy, um, you know, I think it's a, it's a great asset class. It's a class I've, I've poured a fair amount of my personal capital into uh, alongside yeah. the fund here. Yeah, makes a lot of sense. Thanks for sharing, Jack. So the JCAM fund has the partners and the team in place for success. So we utilize strategic fund services as our fund administrator and accounting. The fund will also be audited by the Joy Knopf and Blood LLP, which is a member firm of the BDO Alliance. Syndication Pro is our investment platform, which provides our investors a portal for viewing fund updates, tax documents, current fund holdings and, and all the fund documents uh, that you need to see. And lastly is Fisher, Bo Fish Fisher Royals, which is the law firm we utilize to form the structure of the fund and for any additional legal necessary. The fund is set up as a Reg D 506 C. Uh, so that means that it's open to accredited investors. So getting into the JCAM diversified fund. So the fund gives passive investors the opportunity to participate um, to achieve diversification and access to projects that are almost always uh, off market and then par participate in the tax advantages of real estate. So as Jack briefly mentioned in his introduction there, sort of the genesis of the diversified fund was born out of investing passively into real estate syndications. So Jack couldn't personally invest in mortgage debt because of conflicts of interest with the last fund. So he started investing in private multifamily real estate syndications. 
and found it to be really time consuming to source and review possible deals. It was also really time consuming to build out a diversified portfolio of operators, projects, and geographies. This is because most of the minimum investments per project are around 50,000. Uh, and you know, that's no big deal if you have, you know, seven figures or more to invest. And really the biggest deal is the hundreds of hours it takes to source, do the due diligence, the paperwork for each project, and then manage all the K-1s you get for each project. So if you're not that person, then you may only be able to invest in, in one or two projects. And, you know, frankly, if you invest in one or two projects, that isn't exactly what I would consider diversification. Thus, the strategy of the diversified fund was born. So talking about the, the current holdings of the fund thus far, we have made allocations into 11 investments. Nine of them are multifamily projects. One of them is a senior housing project, and we picked up one REO loan pool. This totals over 1,700 doors in seven emerging markets and seven states. Ultimately, the fund will likely make investments into as many as 15 to 20 multifamily projects and three to five senior housing projects. So here you can see uh, all of these are multifamily projects. Um, this one in Davenport is our senior living project. Um, and then we've got our REO NPL and our PL pool here, and then the remaining multifamily projects. This is a snapshot of the project locations thus far. So pretty diverse across the nation. So jumping into the specific projects. So the Augusta GA project is 104 unit, uh, provides a seven to 9% cash on cash. It has a projected um, IRR of 19% over five years and a 2.2x multiple. Jack, why don't you give us the the update on where we are on this one. Uh, sure. So, um, you know, and, and I speak with this operator uh, generally weekly. They're very much a strategic partner of ours. And, uh, you know, we're, we're at this point about 9% above the initial budget projections. Uh, we've got a ton of cash and reserves. Uh, the first distribution is actually going to end up a little larger than expected. Um, you know, one of the biggest bonuses that was uh, a little more than expected is, uh, you know, we were generally expecting 50% roughly of, a, of depreciation from the cost segregation, but this project, uh, just due to the, um, just the economics of the deal, the level and the quality of renovation uh, in the business plan, uh, we received, um, you know, almost 90% uh, of uh, depreciation the first deal. This is purely a paper loss. Uh, the building's running at a profit, it's running above projections, but uh, by taking advantage of the current tax codes and the bonus depreciation, uh, you're able to take uh, a significant amount uh, of loss up front, and that means that the distributions for the coming years will be tax deferred because uh, unless you have other passive income, you can defer immediately, which we'll talk about uh, later. Um, and then I just talked to um, uh, our partner yesterday. Uh, they're actually going to make the distribution um, more than likely before the end of the month or early next week, beginning of June. And, uh, you know, it's going to be about 5% of, um, of our invested capital. So this deal was... Uh, funded uh, last September and uh, you know, we're on track to, you know, to make, you know, by the end of the year, we'll likely have a, at least a 10% cash on cash the first year on this deal, which is, which is really good for a value add deal, especially when there's, you know, a fair amount of money going into the improvements at the same time. Yeah. So this one has been, been really, really good for us so far. Uh, Jack, you touched briefly on uh, the benefits that the depreciation had on that particular project, but why don't you talk about it sort of globally? Uh, sure. With the way that it works for the fund. Sure, sure. And, and coming from, and I see, I know there's a bunch of, uh, a number of note investors and uh, mortgage investors in the call too. So this is something that, uh, you know, over the last uh, couple of years is uh, something I've really dove into and come to appreciate. Um, you know, these assets are assets that, uh, you know, we're expecting will appreciate and grow in value since we're improving the uh, net operating income or renovating units. Uh, however, the way the tax codes work is that uh, a typical residential building would be depreciated over 27 and a half years. You take the value of the building, you subtract the land, and these larger buildings, generally a great majority of the values in the improvements 
the buildings and the, you know, the land may be worth a few percent of the, of the, of the building. And uh, by doing a cost segregation analysis, uh, you hire an engineering firm and they'll look at the windows, they'll look at the air conditioning, heating systems, the kitchen cabinets, the piping, the plumbing, the retaining walls, every, everything to do with the property. And they'll actually schedule out the depreciation Let's say some is over three years, some is over five, some is over 10, 15, et cetera. Uh, the way the current tax laws are written is anything that depreciates in less than 15 years could actually be taken in one year. Um, as of next year, if they do not renew it, it would actually be over two years instead of one year. But uh, you know, on, the, on these buildings, which are in some cases 20 to $30 million buildings, um, you know, we could be accelerating millions of dollars of depreciation and that all passes through pro rata to our investors. So uh, the long and the short of it is, uh, you know, this past year, uh, all of our equity investors in 2020 received almost 100 cents on a dollar write down. So if you put in 100,000, you got a K1 for negative 100,000, all while making either a six or an eight percent preferred return, um, you know, that we're paying out on time. So uh, if you have other rental properties or other passive income, you could actually offset other income you're already earning. If you have nothing else, if you just have a salary job, you could actually roll over this depreciation uh, indefinitely and it can count against future future distributions that we make so so that your your return on investment from us is tax deferred. Yeah. Um, with that said, it's a complicated process. Please talk to your CPA. We're also happy to have sort of one-on-one uh, -on -one deeper dives with you and or your CPA to make sure that you can make the most efficient tax decisions for yourself. Yeah, yeah. Huge benefits tax-wise to be in uh, in these asset classes. And, you know, uh, I think it's our intention, Jack, uh, in the coming months to have, uh, to do a webinar with uh, with our CPA or a CPA that's kind of a specialist here so we can do a deep dive for, for those of you that are uh, looking for more information on that. So looking at another one of our multifamily projects, this one is in Phoenix, Arizona. It's a 288 unit building. It's got an 8% cash on cash, 15 to 18 IRR over three years and a 1.5, 1.7X uh, equity multiple. Jack, why don't you bring us up to speed on the, the updates on this one? Sure, this is a great project. And that picture actually doesn't do it justice. That was the before picture. Um, I actually visited the site yeah. in person uh, in March to see the updates. And, uh, you know, it looks completely different. The yeah, exterior they modernized the that. They modernized yeah. that railing on the patio, which looks, looks really yeah. great. Yeah. Yeah, the exterior uh, railings and patio across the board. They redid the main leasing office. They redid the pool, um, the gym, the uh, there's a barbecue area. And then every apartment that was vacated uh, has been fully renovated, including laminate flooring, uh, kitchens, bathrooms. Um, on their two bedroom units, the previous rent in place was 1,050 and they're getting 1,295 on the new units. So uh, on average, they're increasing the rents by $262, 26% above the previous rents. And these rent, these, these, these units are renting immediately. Um, I was able to see one where they were just putting in the kitchen and they literally have a waiting list. So the moment, the moment the, the unit's done, uh, the, uh, the tenants are moving in. It's, it's best in class for the neighborhood. So, um, you know, it's, uh, they're, they're far and away superior to everything else within a few miles. And, uh, you know, this operator is, is, has done this on 40, 42 different buildings they own. And it's, it's a very much a conveyor belt. They do almost the same, they, they acquire typically the same type of building, do the same renovation. So they have this down to a science. Yeah. Um, we're actively receiving distributions on, on this asset quarterly. And, um, this was originally a three year targeted as a three year hold, but given how hot the Phoenix market is, there's a chance this may sell early. Um, you know, we, we don't know for sure, but, uh, um, you know, they're rolling, rolling through with renovations and, uh, you know, 25% above, above the initial projections, uh, as well for net yeah. operating income. So Huge. 22%. So, uh, this is going really, really well. well. And yeah. because of that, we actually are, uh, as you see later, there's a, there's a deal in Las Vegas. We just committed, we just funded. So, uh, we're in a second deal and potentially a third deal with this operator because, uh, um, you know, they're, they're, they're proving to, um, be, you know, an amazing operator in this market. Yeah. yeah. The next one up is another multifamily project. This one's in Jacksonville, Florida. It's a 284 unit property with a 10 to 11% cash on cash, 
14 plus percent projected IRR over five years with a 1.9x multiple. Jack, why don't you bring us up to speed on the update here? Sure. So uh, again, this was acquired towards the end of last year. Uh, property is currently 95% occupied um, with an average rent of uh, just under $1,000 a month. Um, you know, the business plan is going uh, according to projections. Um, minimal impact from COVID. You know, Florida is fortunately one of the states that uh, opened up uh, faster and, and avoided sort of the the worst of the of the COVID. Uh, you know, of, of COVID. It's also yeah. uh, one of the highest net uh, net migration markets uh, in the country. People are moving to Florida uh, from you know various places in the Northeast and uh, right. Jacksonville, Jacksonville itself was top five, right? Yeah, yeah. It's it's a great and, and, and majority of what we what we have here. These are workforce housing, Class B. Um, Jacksonville is also just a great mar market for that. This is near a military base. There's also just tons of service industry jobs, call centers. There's there's huge mortgage outsourcing. Uh, uh, there, there's there's just tons of tons of job growth in in the market. So, um, and, and this is the si similar business plan with most of these. They are renovating units as they become available. Uh, if they're vacant, they're actually renovating to increase the rents and. Uh, and uh, yeah, this is paying out quarterly distributions and, and on track. Yeah. And uh, you know, very strong operator. The uh, the property manager actually took an equity investment in the deal too. So in addition to to uh, the the uh, our other JV partner, the actual property management company did make a, an equity investment too. So it's always good when your manager is aligned with you. Right. Yeah. They've got some skin in the game. So that's that's pretty solid. Next one up is our Greensville, South Carolina multifamily project. This one's 144 units. Again, an 8% cash on cash, 16.3% IRR over five years with a 1.95 X multiple. What's the update on this one, Jack? Sure. So yeah, this one was uh, had a little bit more value add. Um, you know, we're actually and actually I just got an update in literally last night and did update the PowerPoint. You know, we're we're, we're approaching 94% pre-lease now. Um, in addition to our investment, actually, a, a, a trusted uh, uh, client of mine who had a 1031 exchange also, uh, you know, reviewed the deal alongside us and actually ended up putting uh, doing a 1031 directly into the deal as tenant in common. So, uh, even though we only put a small amount of money in the deal, um, you know, it was uh, you know, someone we know and trust, uh, you know, uh, put a larger amount of money in. Um, you know, in addition to the, the renovations, uh, there's always uh, unique ways to grow uh, grow the net operating income. Uh, that includes the uh, Rhino uh, surety deposit. Uh, it's a third party insurance carrier, which uh, you know, will insure the unit for a security deposit and allows a tenant to come in with less uh, um, you know less down payment, uh, even though they're still more than more than qualified. In, in many cases, you actually um, get a piece of the uh, uh, of, of the insurance premiums that are that are paid on this as well, so it's one of the other ways to you know when you when you have a sophisticated management team to grow net operating income. Um, you know this also has uh, you know is paying uh, monthly distributions. Some pay quarterly, some pay semi annually. This is what happens to pay monthly, yeah. and uh, you know we're receiving our distributions as partners in this like clockwork. Yeah, excellent. Next one up is the Atlanta GA project. This one's 150 unit uh, multifamily with an 11% cash on cash, 17% IRR over five years and a 1.9X multiple. Um, this one also came with pretty significant depreciation, right Jack? Yeah, yeah, this was uh, this was 50, 56 cents on the dollar uh, and, and this closed in December. So what's great is when you do this at the end of the year, in some cases, you still get the entire uh, entire year's depreciation. So uh, part of the overall tax planning, too, is if something sells, you don't want it to sell three days before the end of the year. You want it to sell in October, or November. So you have time to reinvest uh, and balance your, uh, you know, your your uh, your depreciation with your capital gains. Um, so yeah, this building is, uh, you know, has room for value add, but you know, it's it's currently 100% occupancy. So, um, you know, as units become uh, vacant, they'll they'll be renovated. Um, in in the meantime, if the tenants want to renew the leases, uh, there's a whole there's an art and a science to this. There's an efficiency where, um, you know, if you can raise rents by, you know, if the rents are $100 below market, you may raise them $30 a year, and in that case, it's better to keep the occupancy. Get the rents closer to market without having to immediately do do uh, the renovation. 
and you know they're balancing the amount of renovations they're doing per month so uh you know our operator here has been um doing apartments since 2003 he's never lost investor principal um that includes going through the 2008 crisis and uh you know we love atlanta uh they're very well positioned in atlanta they're 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 our partners are the ones that get the first call from brokers uh in in, the, in their markets and in competitive deals they're um, in many cases getting the last look um and in some cases they have such a reputation that they're getting off market deals uh, one of the other ones we'll show is ne next door to one that they already control um so we're we're, we're excited about uh our, our partnership there's other deals in the pipeline with uh uh in in the atlanta metro and we, we love the market yeah Next up is Lexington, Kentucky. This is a 314 unit multifamily with a 10% cash on cash, 25% IRR over eight years and a one and a half to two X multiple. What's the update here, Jack? Sure, so yeah, this was a was a more recent closing um, and uh, yeah, it's moving moving along. The newer, the newer units are um, you know, renting out projections uh, what was a little different about this one than the other units is that a uh, majority of these units are renovated already. And uh, what had happened is the, the prior owner had uh, purchased uh, the building when it was in, you know, a, a little bit more distress and uh, was using a bridge loan. So they renovated, uh, you know, they were down to 25% occupancy and they were just renovating almost all the units at once where the building was, was barely occupied. And, uh, you know, they were pretty aggressive about filling the units. They basically, in order to pay off the bridge loan and get a Fannie Mae traditional mortgage on this, they uh, rented a lot of the units below market. So, uh, you know, our, our partners on this deal, uh, then the second thing is this deal has a slightly higher interest rate than the others because the, the mortgage was assumed. So we were able to buy this at a, at a discount, even though it's actually a more stabilized property. And, uh, you know, our partner comes with uh, more of a Wall Street background uh, and worked in a family office for 10 years. Um, so has a little bit more institutional capital on this deal and then needed us to come in on the uh, general partner side uh, rather than just being a limited partner. So um, I was excited about this deal is we're, we're, we're a true co-GP. Um, and what, what that means is we actually got a piece of the uh, you know, of, of the of the acquisition and the structuring fee on the deal. So uh, we got 3% of our invested capital back in the first 45 days. And um, we also get a piece of the, uh, the carried interest on the deal, which uh, increases the returns of the fund by likely three to 5%. Yeah, that's so, why the uh, IRR on this one's a little higher yeah, than the others. Yeah, so, and, and you know, that, it's a question that comes up, uh, you know, certain investors are, are you know, concerned because, you know, we're, you know, somewhat, you know, I don't really like the term fund of funds, but, you know, because we're in these multiple projects, in some cases there are, um, you know, multiple levels of fees, but uh, in many cases we're getting, because of the way we structure our deals, we're actually get, getting higher returns than, uh, than investors would going directly into a deal just because of our buying power and our relationships. Yeah, makes sense. All right, so the next asset uh, we'll talk about is the NPL REO portfolio. Uh, this is a, a portfolio of single ham family homes that we purchased at the end of last year at a solid discount. Um, and as we have worked through dispositioning these, uh, we have done strong to quite strong, I'd say. <laughs> um, so, you know, started out with 26, you know, current status is we've been able to sell six of those properties for gross proceeds of 214,000. Uh, we have two pending sale for gross proceeds of 81,000. Um, 10 of those are performing, meaning that they, there's either leasebacks or um, loan modifications that they're paying on. And that gives us about $3,500 a month in cash flow. Three of, three of them we're still working to um, get to an outcome and five of those are essentially like throwaways and we pick them up for one dollar so um you know if there's not a not an efficient way to exit them then we're, we're just moving on um the really cool thing about this is would we pay 360 361 um we're likely going to have you know a little over 300 back um you know in less than six months um and then we'll still have 10 loans that are that are performing 
Um, so this is a huge, huge winner for us. Um, so. Yeah, Will, and you, you've done a lot of work on this yourself too. So really appreciate uh, your, your uh, yeah, it's a deep yeah. effort, but you did a lot yeah. on these deals. And uh, um, yeah, and look yeah. like, you know, this is what Jack and I did at the last fund. I mean, we were doing it at scale, um, but that's, you know, we're the operators on that particular uh, trade, you know, because we have the experience and the skill set to, to have profitable exits on those. Um, I think if we could do that, at scale, we would probably do more of it, but um, you know we can't necessarily play in that space right now uh, because the pricing yeah. is so so competitive. So. Yeah, you either got to be really big or really or just sort of take advantage of these niche deals when they happen. You know, this was a deal where um, the seller wanted to close an LLC, and it was the last remaining assets, and we we took everything that was left, um, did our diligence. You know, that's why there were some assets for a dollar because they just they wanted to close the LLC. So it was like literally take everything, and if it's not worth anything. You know, we, we priced it at a dollar and they just wanted it off their books. So, yeah. Um, yeah. you know, that, that's the benefit of this fund where, you know, we're able to, to you know, do the consistent cash flow on these, uh, you know, very well structured multifamily deals. And then occasionally, uh, you know, we still have the, the ability in our fund to, to make opportunistic investments when they uh, when they cross our desk. Yeah. Next one up here is uh, another one in Augusta. Uh, this one is 104 units, provides seven to nine percent cash on cash. 19% IRR over five years in the 2.2 X multiple. Uh, Jack, why don't you tell us about this one? Sure. Uh, yeah, and just to be, yeah, it's Atlanta, not Augusta. This is the same operator as the Carolina oh, yeah. and yeah. the, yeah. the Britain. Um, yeah, I, I alluded to it earlier. Uh, this deal is actually next door to one that we're not involved with, but the same partner actually owns the one next door to this in another syndication. So uh, this was a, uh, um, mostly off market deal i mean there was a broker involved but it wasn't really a full marketing process and uh it's being purchased for ten thousand dollars a door cheaper than the property that they bought a year ago in another syndication so uh when you talk about market intelligence you talk about understanding how the units that they've already been renovating or renting for um one of the um key things that uh, they know about this neighborhood is that uh it's uh, you can take the back roads to the airport. So this is west, uh, you know, kind of west of west of uh, Atlanta, and um, you know, a lot of the typical tenants in this building are working in the logistics. They're working at the airport. They're working at the the uh, warehouses and the trucking and that and that stuff within the region. And uh, traffic is uh, can be pretty intense in Atlanta uh, <laughs> really from today. Yeah. And um, you know, they find that they're getting uh, a tenant base of airport workers. So. Uh, they're going in, we're going into this deal knowing, you know, having an edge where if somebody's just trying to come in from New York City that's new to Atlanta and just may not know um, just some of the upsides uh, in, the, in the deal. So, uh, again, it's a value add. Um, it's the same group that we're in the other deal with that's uh, been doing this since 2003. And, uh, you know, they've got they've got things down to a science um, from uh, from renovating the units to uh, setting up the uh, utility bill back um, to doing the low flow toilets so that the water bill is cheaper. It's really a, a, a soup to nuts efficiency when, when these buildings are run with uh, you know professional and borderline institutional level uh, management. Yeah, another solid multifamily project there. Next one up is the first senior housing allocation we've committed to. Uh, it's a development new construction project uh, it's going to be a 106 unit assisted living and memory care facility in Davenport, Iowa. The projected performance of this project is a 15% cash on cash, 25% IRR with a 3x equity multiple. Why don't you bring us up to speed on this one, Jack? Sure, sure. So this is going to close in the next 30 days. Uh, you know, we have made a commitment. We're just, um, you know, they're they're just finalizing their construction loan, and and uh, by the time we invest, this is uh, shovels in the ground, ready to go. Um, I said they they build almost the same facility in in multiple markets in the Midwest. So um, although most of what every, everything else we've done so far has been uh, value add, where the buildings are already in place. Um, you know, just uh, you're gonna, we're gonna generate higher returns on a construction deal. And, uh, you know, for us to take uh, risk on construction, 
uh, yeah, to me, this is an ideal way to do it. Um, same architect, same building, same contractor. Uh, there's a completion guarantee. So this is a, you know, this is a, you know, corporate level construction. Um, it's almost like building a franchise in a way where they know exactly what they're gonna build. They have a completion guarantee. And, um, you know, they've built, uh, the, the partners have been building for 20 plus years. They formalized, they came together and formalized the, build, the business as more of a brand over the last couple of years. Uh, but, you know, the team in general has been, has been doing these for, for 20 years. And, uh, you know, based on the demographics, the, the need for senior housing is growing. Um, there are well-researched deals. They do market studies. They know exactly how many beds are within X number of miles of where they're building. And, uh, you know, they, they, they know where the demand is. So in, in this case, there's one other facility and it's uh, kind of an older facility. Um, you know, it looks more like a, you know, a seventies hospital than it does, a uh, you know, a nice, um, comfortable, you know, kind of resort community. And, yeah. Um, <clears throat> and that makes, you know, Jack, that makes a huge difference, um, uh, now more than ever with COVID, you know, um, designing these facilities with larger hallways, better ventilation systems, you know, all the technology to protect residents, um, you know, going forward, um, during pandemics you know, is another competitive advantage of these newer facilities beyond them being nice and new and way better than any of the other product available in the marketplace. So, um, yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, we, we've got, uh, you know, a, a lot of deployment into stabilized cash flowing deals where, you know, we've seen the value add component. We see that our distributions are going up. So uh, the only downside of this deal is there's a little uh, there's not going to be immediate cash flow over the first uh, 12 to 18 months. But we have enough enough cash flow coming in from the other projects that we can balance balance out some higher returning assets. And uh, another benefit for our passive investors, um, you know, if you uh, you know, if you love this deal, but you really need cash flow, you know, you put money in and you don't get any money back for 18 to 24 months, but you get exposure to this through our fund where you're still going to receive cash flow and then be able to participate in, in the upside on, on a deal that's, uh, you know, likely to, to generate closer to a 30% IRR. Yeah. Good point, Jack. Next one up is our most recent uh, multifamily allocation. It's a 252 unit building in Las Vegas. It's got a 16 to 17% IRR over three years and has a 1.55 X equity multiple. Um, as Jack alluded to earlier, this is with uh, a similar operator, or same operator. So why don't you bring us up to speed on this, Jack? Sure. So yeah, this is the same operator as the Phoenix deal. So, uh, you know, I've, I've been to the Phoenix asset in person. I, I've seen what they do. They've, they've done this, uh, you know, they own a portfolio of 42 buildings. So it's very much uh, proven concept, proven model. Um, we, we, uh, you know, we had the Excel financial models side by side on the Vegas, this Vegas asset and then the Phoenix asset and, um, you know, the, the, the acquisition price to the, the current rents to the after repair rents to the rent comps, it's, it's Phoenix and Vegas, but the, those markets are somewhat similar. They're both take, they're both, they're both growth markets. There, there's a lot of population movement there. Um, you know, just one thing I'd like to point out about, uh, you know, a, a common question that I that has come up is sort of the Vegas market with COVID, um, you know, the, the gaming and entertainment and, and, and uh, hospitality is obviously a, a decent sized portion of the Vegas uh, economy, but it's uh, far from the only part of it. And the, the, a lot of the growth is coming from other sectors. Uh, there, there's tons of job growth. There's companies moving from from California to Nevada. Uh, there's a lot of uh, more people working remote. So um, there's a lot more to Vegas than, than just the casino industry. Uh, this particular property is, uh, you know, relatively close to the airport and, you know, for workforce housing and for the, the level of rents uh, and the quality of apartment, you know, this is the type of apartment where, you know, the, the housekeepers, the maintenance staff, the people that, um, you know, maybe working odd hours and don't want to live 30 minutes away, um, add to that that, you know, rents in Henderson and Summerlin and the upscale suburbs now are, are, are increasing dramatically uh, uh, as, as is the value of the housing as well. So, um, you know, we, we love this deal. There's gigantic upside. Um, you know, the, the, the pro forma IRR is, is mid upper teens. Um, but I mean, there's a chance, uh, you know, if, if things execute the right way um, and uh, interest rates stay 
relatively low and institutional demand is, is still there. I mean, this could be this could be an absolute home run as well. Yeah. And uh, we, we did get preferential terms on this deal as well. Um, this is not an operator that takes twenty five and fifty thousand dollar checks. So um, not only did we do we have access to it where, um, you know, someone might not be able to go in directly as just a, a basic accredited investor. Um, you know, we, we were able to negotiate better terms. Um, and uh, yeah. yeah, Vegas is third in the nation uh, for annual rent growth. Uh, rents have increased 57% since 2012. And um, yeah, I mean, uh, I hate to even put a 45 IRR on a spreadsheet, but uh, again, that's upside. <laughs> yeah. It's not, that's not a guaranteed number, yeah. but uh, yeah. you know, and look, if, if we get anywhere close to that number, um, you know, it'll be an absolute home run. And yeah. uh, you know, in the meantime, the building's occupied and cash flowing as it is too. So it's not like it's a vacant building that has all this downside risk. It's just a matter of um, executing on the same exact business plan that's been done 42 other times. Yeah, makes sense. Next one up is Charlotte, North Carolina, which is another recent multifamily allocation. Uh, why don't you share the specifics on this one, Jack? Uh, sure. So it's actually a two portfolio package so far to fund. It's a group called Lucerne um, that we actually had on a webinar um, probably about yeah. a month, month and a half ago with David Hansel. So, um, you know, we like the Charlotte market, uh, you know, similar to how we have a, a partner in Atlanta. Um, you know, they're they're well positioned in Charlotte. Uh, they, they know, you know, they know the neighborhoods. They're, they're uh, very close to the brokers and uh, also, you know, uh, working through off-market deals. So uh, this is a relatively new acquisition, but, uh, you know, same playbook, um, uh, apartment building that's occupied, but just a little tired and a little dated. There's room for 22%, uh, um, 22% rent increase to just bring the rents towards where, where the rest of the market is. And, um, you know, we've got other strategic opportunities in, in the Charlotte market with, uh, with this group. They're, they're very experienced. Um, you know, one of the principals actually was involved in the, the largest repositioning in in, in uh, Manhattan and Stuyvesant Town. Um, very high profile project, and uh, you know, also had worked at Brocadia, you know, one of the prominent uh, brokerages uh, for sale and, and finance placement. So seasoned seasoned partners, and uh, you know, very excited to be involved with them, and we're expecting uh, you know solid uh, double digit mid teens returns with them. Yeah. Yeah. It's upside. Awesome. Beautiful. Jack, thanks for giving us uh, a little bit more color on each of those projects. So talking about the diversified fund expected returns, uh, our expected net return to investors is a 15% plus IRR. We've got a minimum investment of $50,000 and a preferred return target of 6 to 8%. Um, so that six to eight percent will vary based on uh, which share class you come into. And so there are four share class options. The two equity options are as follows. Uh, we have a six percent preferred, it's a 70 30 split. 70 percent goes to the investors, 30 percent to the fund that has a 50k minimum. The higher preferred, which is eight percent, is uh, the same equity split, 70 30, uh, but has a $250,000 minimum. And then we've got two fixed share classes. We've got a 10% preferred, which is a three-year term, has a 50,000 minimum. And we also have a 12% preferred with a 250K minimum. And Jack, why don't you just talk a little bit about lockup or time commitment on that share class? Sure, as far as the, the 12%? The, yeah, the 12% preferred. Yeah, the twelve percent is something we we take uh, you know we take selectively. We don't always keep it open, but we're willing to be strategic, especially if it uh, involves uh, a new acquisition we're working on. And um, you know, it's uh, generally we we would like to be able to work the money for one year, but there are provisions that uh, essentially, if the investor wants to be redeemed, um, you know, we will redeem over a period of a few months and basically raise as we're raising the 70, 30, the class B or the class E shares will we'll pay off the preferred return. So it's basically a bridge loan. And, uh, the reason we'll do that is if we can get better deal terms on a new investment and someone wants a shorter term, uh, investment, we'll, you know, we'll take in the preferred return and then we'll replace it with, uh, with the standard equity over, uh, yeah. you know, a period of a few months or a year. Um, so that's, that's money that we're going to pay off first. So. All right, so we get a ton of questions on this. So we're going to run through an example 
uh, of what a $100,000 investment looks like into the equity share class B. So let's say you invest 100,000. In year one, you receive a preferred of 6% or $6,000. The same in year two. And in year three, uh, as there are dispositions or exits from some of the projects, we'll start returning capital uh, and or principal. And in this, in this example, we return 50,000. So you'll, you'll receive your 6% or $6,000 plus your $50,000 of your initial capital. Uh, and then in year four, you'll get $3,000 in prep, which is a 6% uh, on the remaining 50,000 of capital you have in the fund. Plus, we'll also return uh, capital of $25,000. Again, so this is happening as you know dispositions or exits are happening on our projects, we're able to return capital. Uh, in year five, you'll receive $1,500 or 6% on the $25,000 of remaining capital that you have in the fund. And then you'll also receive that last $25,000 of your capital or principal invested. And then in, six, in years uh, six and seven, you'll get 70% of profits uh, after all capital and prefs have been paid. Ultimately, this works out to be about a 15% IRR, which uh, you know, as we've run through these deals, you can see we're trending well above based on the current projects. Um, does that make sense, Jack? Do you wanna add a little bit more color to that or? Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, just, uh, you know, you see the little asterisk on here, um, but, uh, you know, this is not set in stone. Um, you know, it's very possible there'll be some money returned in 2022. Um, it may be 5,000 in 2022, 40,000 in 2023. So um, this is really just an illustration, but, uh, you know, the key, the key is, you know, you're getting paid a return on your unreturned capital. So, um, you know, Esri return capital, you know, you're, you're still getting a return on what's left. And then once all your money's back, you're still getting profits. Um, and uh, one other point is um, there's a decent chance some of the return of capital will actually will actually be through uh, refinances, which would be a tax tax neutral uh, tax free event. So as we're raising the value of these buildings, uh, there's a program through Fannie Mae called the Fannie Mae Supplemental. So, you know, you, you see these, 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 these properties were raising, raising rents, raising the net operating income 20 to 30%. So we may actually, that 50,000 that would be returned, most of that may be through refinances and actually be money that's returned to you, but you're not paying tax on it. You're, you're not getting a positive, you're still, you still have a negative K1 from the depreciation and you have money in your pocket without tax. And uh, we would likely have another fund by year three. We'll probably, we're, we're likely to do a fund a year so as we return capital, we'll have another place for you to put it that could also have new depreciation. Yeah, so the the tax benefits just carry through on and on. It's it's pretty pretty unbelievable. So um, and great, it looks like we have a question from from Zach here. Um, yeah, yeah, so so we do pay quarterly. Um, you know, for this for this uh, you know slide here, we're just using annual examples, but we do we do make quarterly distributions. Um, as of now, um, you know, we, we opened the fund in literally end of September last year and uh, took an initial investments in the fourth quarter. We paid our first distribution in April and we paid uh, distributions for um, all of 2020 and through quarter one of 2021 um, at that point. And the plan is to pay quarterly. Um, and, um, you know, generally, you know, assuming there's uh, cash flow there, we'll generally pay a straight line. Um, you know, on a 6%, we'd pay one and a half percent a quarter and the 12% we're paying 3% a quarter. Um, however, depending on the value add, the cash flow, some of the cash flows may be a little lumpier. So, um, we could pay a little less one quarter, a little more the next quarter. Um, but, uh, you know, in general, we're, we're seeking pretty consistent returns and the way we've managed the portfolio so far, um, especially with the extra REOs and the, uh, the, 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 the super profitable deals we've had, uh, you know, we're, we're expecting to pay pretty consistently. Yeah, makes sense. Thanks for the question, Zach. All right, so we'll, what do we think going forward, Jack? What's kind of the, the high level? Yeah, it's, it's, it's very exciting. So, I mean, we started this sort of, you know, towards the middle to tail end of, of COVID. So, you know, our initial deals were all, you know, 
deals we were looking at in August, September to, to close in September, October. So, um, you know, it's very exciting to see, uh, you know, how, how things are progressing and, and the collections we had even during, during COVID. Uh, we've got a strong pipeline. Uh, there's a number of deals we were just on a call today. And, um, you know, as we've got gained momentum here, we actually have a strong pipeline of deals where we have co-sponsor economics, where we're able to, to earn in some cases, you know, 3% uh, back in the first 30 to 45 days for, for helping structure the deal. And, and that, that goes right to the fund. Um, you know, there's a number of other deals where for the right size and the right investment, we can get a percentage of the, uh, the uh, carried interest on the deal. Um, you know, it just means generally three to five points higher returns. Um, you know, the, this is the last year of, of bonus depreciation where you could take a hundred percent bonus depreciation in the first year or so. Um, we're still expecting significant K-1 depreciation this year. So for uh, all investors who own other passive, uh, passive income, whether it's rental properties or um, you know, talk to your accountant about what's on Schedule E of your tax return that's that's passive. Um, you could uh, feasibly offset other current income you have, um, you know, by using 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 your investment in us to help you offset other taxes you may already have to pay. Yeah. Um, and yeah, things are in, in full swing. Um, you know, the economy seems to be opening. Um, there's still a, a flood of people moving to the southeast. Uh, that was happening before COVID. I think this uh, increased it. Um, the single family housing market's on fire too. I think uh, the single, if I had to point to one single biggest thing is that, you know, there's still a lack of supply on single family and that trickles down to apartments. Uh, there's been a housing shortage since 2008. There's just never been enough new build. And, uh, you know, the types of multifamily that we're in, we're buying well below replacement costs. And, uh, you know, these are these are not the types of, uh, of, of housing that you could build new, especially as the cost of lumber goes up. So um, yeah, there's serious yeah. supply chain constraints on yeah. construction right now. Yeah, and uh, just want to point out that uh, you know be because because the fund has a profit split component to it, um, you know we are planning to do a series of funds, um, and this fund is likely to close uh, in quarter four of, of this year, um, and that's to be fair to the early investors. Um, investors are paid their preferred return from the day they uh, day their day their money uh, is accepted into the fund. Um, but um, you know, since some of these buildings will sell in year three, or that there's going to be a much more significant amount of cash coming, it becomes unfair to the early investors. So we're uh, planning to close this fund uh, later this year, and then we will um, subsequently launch fund two. Um, yeah, soon, soon thereafter. Yeah. Um, you know, we're, we're above projections and, and really feel really strong about it. I have seven figures of my own money in the fund as well. So uh, if you're contemplating a, you know, a 50 or hundred thousand dollar investment, you could feel comfortable that uh, I, I've got, uh, I'm all in, I've got uh, you know, a significant amount of my net worth in, in, in this deal. So, uh, um, you know, I've, I've yeah. got every bone in my body is, uh, reviewing these deals, networking with these strong partners we have and, uh, you know, going to make it a success. Yeah. Thanks for sharing, Jack. So if you'd like to see more detailed information uh, on the fund offering, you can go to jcaminvestments.com backslash offerings. Uh, that's that's with uh, Syndication Pro where you can view the private placement memorandum, subscription agreement, current fund holdings, you know, fund summary, uh, all the stuff uh, that you want to dive into if you have further interest um we've got our contact information here if you want to follow up with us that'll do it for us today thanks jack for for all the updates on the stuff and uh you guys have a great day and we'll see you on the next one Bye, everybody